Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells and welcome back for another Money Making Monday video. This information is taken from the October 23rd, 2017 thread on my Facebook group and this will probably be a two-part video because there are over 200 comments and I want to try to get to as many people as possible and show you as many different items as possible. If you're not familiar with this video playlist, these items are on my Facebook group. Uh, the link to that is below the video. And what we do is every Monday, Shaney starts the thread and you post the item that you sold, a link to it, what you paid for it, where you got it, uh, what it sold for, and if you know how long it took to sell, just to give um, good information to show other sellers what is working for you on eBay. And we do post links to the actual item so you can go to these threads on my Facebook group and then click the link and go look at the item to determine if it was fixed price or auction, free shipping or not, you know, all that kind of information that is not right here on the thread. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start with Alicia who paid 25 cents for this what we call ugly Christmas sweater and it sold for $23.97 plus shipping. It took over a month to sell, just over a month. So here it is and this is part of the ugly Christmas sweater phase that um, fad I'm, I mean to say that is uh, has been going on quite a while now. I think this started back around 2009, 2010 when these were really the hot thing and they sold for a lot of money on eBay because a lot of them were vintage but now uh, supply has caught up with demand and you can buy them like this Walmart has them they make them um, you know on purpose now so if you are still following that fad of uh, ugly Christmas sweaters that you know and you have heard on the internet that they sell for a lot of money not really true anymore um, but this is a great flip because she paid 25 cents for this and she sold it for $23.97 plus shipping so not a bad job at all okay so let's go back here um, the next item is a vintage smoking jacket Cindy paid five dollars at a yard sale sold for ninety dollars plus shipping now this this was a timing thing I think um, so if we go to the listing she had it listed for $119.99 and she took a $90 best offer this was right before Halloween and right around the time that Hugh Hefner died so my guess is that somebody bought this to wear for Halloween as Hugh Hefner um, may be wrong but that could be part of it um, let's see if the brand is named on here if she has a picture of the tag it just says professional dry clean only I don't see a brand name on here so I'm just guessing based on the timing of it his death around the same time and what it is that that's why it went for so much so she bought it for five dollars and sold it for ninety dollars it took five days to sell so that is a fantastic sale okay let's go down here to Brenda she's got a Suzanne Summers tennis bracelet she bought at a garage sale on Saturday listed it on Sunday and it sold within a few hours so that is why you've got to get these things listed because they might they could sell right away um, if you have a backlog and you need some help getting those items listed see the link above to my video about our virtual listing service we are helping so many sellers um, sell items in October we sold almost excuse me we listed uh, 2180 items um, for sellers that were in their backlog so you've got to get it listed or it won't sell and this is why it only took a few hours this was not rare or collectible it's just something somebody wanted so let's go take a look at the item it's an amethyst 
tennis bracelet. Very pretty there. And let's see if it says Suzanne Summers on the box somewhere. Let's see, I think it does. If we can zoom in on that. Yep, it's on the box there. So now you know Suzanne Summers is more than just Three's Company and the Thigh Master. <laughs> She's got jewelry out there too. So, um, you know, look for that. And Brenda paid what did I say three dollars and took a best offer of 46 and just sold in a few hours so this is proof that you've got to get those things listed they could sell immediately um, so let's move on to another one Brenda's got lots of things for sale that she did last week good job Brenda um, let's see what Mia's got okay yeah I wanted to show you these um, sewing patterns these could be great to sell because people do different things with sewing patterns. They might do crafts, um, use them for decoupage. Some people frame them. Um, in the fashion industry, they, um, you know, they may use them to make old vintage-looking clothing. Um, for some reason, this is not loading. I always seem to get on the internet when it's slow. <laughs> when I start recording. Anyway, you can still see here. Um, and this was October 23rd, the week of, and these were Halloween costumes. So that might have been part of it. Um, you know, whoever was using this obviously had time to make a costume for Halloween. So um, as far as sewing patterns, I have found their best to sell in a lot. Um, Sometimes you'll get them at estate sales and you may have, you know, a box of hundreds of them. And it's very, very time consuming to go through and look up each individual one. There could be some good ones in there that would sell for a high price. The older ones do. Um, what people want is the envelope. Um, that's what they use for repurposing to either frame it or decoupage a table or something like that so they want that envelope with that vintage um, garment shown on the front and you know with the vintage hairstyle and the shoes and the whole thing um, but some people actually use them so you just have to check completed to see what is the best way to do that um, I get this question all the time should I sell in a lot or shell and sell individually and selling individually Yes, you may make more money, but the time investment is just can be ridiculous. And who wants to sit there and look up 200 sewing patterns to find out maybe there's one or two in there that are worth something? Um, and people buy lots of these all the time. So that's my advice on the sewing patterns. Okay, um, let's see. Mia's also got free from her mother-in-law, sold for $30.00. International took a few months. Let's see if this one will load. Um, and it is Avon Bond Girl Shower Gel and Body Lotion. Yep, there it is. My internet's just temperamental. Um, so let's see what this is. Oh, it's like James Bond. It's called Bond Girl and sold for $30. And it went international. So whoever bought it um, in another country check out my video on shipping international there's nothing to be afraid of these are just people in other countries who want to buy stuff and if you're not shipping international you are missing customers they buy everything so you've just got to try it my advice to you on that is just try the English speaking countries first but there is nothing to be afraid of there is so much bad information on the internet about all these horror stories about eBay selling international and let's face it the internet is a great place to complain and to um, exaggerate things that happen because it's not moderated who's gonna tell you you can't say that um, and you know just because one person had one bad experience doesn't mean you're going to the rewards far outweigh the risk um, so that's my speech on international I just <laughs> I just hate to see people leaving money on the table because they refuse to do it. Um, 
Okay, so let's see what else we've got. Um, didn't Robert? Okay, Robert sold this on eBay for forty-five ninety-nine. Shipped. The shipping cost was six dollars and sixty-three cents. He paid sixty-five cents at a thrift store, and was on eBay about five weeks. So let's see what the item is. It's a back brace. It looks like no. Hinged elbow hyperextensive support brace black. Okay, so it's like a shoulder arm support. Okay, and he got it for 55 cents. I'm sorry, 65 cents at a thrift store. Sold for $45.99. Um, so look through those baskets of junk where you've got all these things in little packages. Um, there's all kind of stuff hiding in there. And what an easy thing to ship. Um, you know, lightweight, doesn't break, just toss it in an envelope and you're done. So this was a support brace, so look for those. Okay, Mia's got some more great things here. I try to pick different people. Um, here's Dana. She lives in Georgia in my neck of the woods. She bought at a state sale for $2 and sold for 60 plus shipping in one day. Again, if you don't get it listed, it can't sell. It is a, a green lace bedspread. Very pretty. Let's see if it has a brand name on it. It's kind of hard to read, but you can definitely tell it's vintage. I can see um, that's a really pretty pattern, a pretty color for a little girl's room or, you know, people that have these bed and breakfast or Airbnbs or a second house, a lake house, a beach house, whatever, always looking for stuff to decorate. So they're going on eBay to buy used um, for that purpose as well as, you know, just for their own house. So $2 sold for $60 in one day. And bedding is so easy to ship, um, doesn't break, you don't have to do much to it. Um, so if you're not looking at the linens, then that is definitely something to check out. Okay, let's see what else we've got. Um, Janae's always got great stuff. Paid $1 at a state sale, sold in a month on best offer for $20. And I'm going to look at this vintage Aladdin mug because I had something like this. Um, yeah, I remember these. If you're old like me, you remember these kind of things. It's the plastic one, but um, these are great. I used to take my lunch to work in something like this when I worked at the bank, um, you know, leftovers from dinner or whatever, and, you know, a dollar, and she flipped it to $23 and sold it very quickly. So there's just no... Um, you know, leave no stone unturned in those thr thrift stores. If you're not exploring all the different categories, you're missing things. Okay. All right, here's Lisa. Paid $3 at a church rummage sale. Sold for full price of $45 plus shipping in a couple of days. Okay, Lisa, you are inspiring me to get my Cole Haan shoes listed that have been sitting next to my desk now for probably three weeks <laughs> because I've been doing like a million things with traveling and um, working on my VA business and everything else. I'm just like all of you. I'm really busy and I have little piles of stuff too. So, um, I, I totally get where where y'all are coming from when you say that you just things just sit there a little while because sometimes they do. So wait, Lisa paid what three dollars? Yes, and these are beautiful. They're kind of like driving mocks. Yep, that's what they are. They, that's what they look like to me when you see these leather shoes that have the little they're sort of little balls on the bottom of them. Another word for that is driving mock. It's just what they're called. But these are gorgeous shoes. And they don't look like they've even been worn. If you look at the soles, they look practically brand new. But she sold them as pre-owned. And that is a great flip. These probably easily fit into a padded flat rate mailer and were simple to ship. Oh, here she says, 
I ship most shoes via USPS either in a flat rate padded envelope or a USPS shoe box so she offered FedEx smart post as one of the options and the buyer chose that she does calculated shipping so when I think there are potentially cheaper delivery methods based on size and weight I give the buyer options which is great um, you don't need to offer every single option on your listings use common sense you know if it weighs more than first class obviously you're not going to put that on there but um, two options is usually fine you don't have to off offer every single option okay so let's look at some other things here um, this is interesting another one by Lisa this photo cost just pennies as I paid five dollars for a huge box of vintage photos did my research on the uniform pictured and found it to be a Norwegian Salvation Army volunteer sold for best offer of twenty dollars after several months and is shipping to the Netherlands okay so a few things on this one um, I do have a video about shipping excuse me selling vintage photographs you want to check that out for more information um, this is beautiful I can see someone just framing this and you know using this as a as home decor um, very interesting older piece no writing on the back it's got some writing on the front and this she researched it probably based on what was said uh, the writing on the hat and just what the uniform looked like it looks pretty plain I bet that's how she did her research was based on the writing on the hat so she took a best offer of twenty dollars and this cost her just pennies because she bought an entire box full of these so very good sale on that okay let's move on down to somebody else Lisa's got a bunch of sales on there okay what did Angela do okay paid 350 at Goodwill sold in two weeks with best offer at forty dollars and what is it Lawrence Kazar that is a great brand to sell this is women's uh, like evening wear formal wear mother of the bride type stuff and it's this is the tag Lawrence Kazar K-A-Z-A-R from New York uh, this is hundred percent silk that increases its value as well as all of the beading and sequins and detail work and so this is just the top and she shows lots of good close-up photos there with the sequins and the beading and again she bought it for 350 at Goodwill and took a best offer of $40 um, let's see her keywords the 2x great it's a larger size and she's got vintage I don't know that she could have put any more keywords in there looks like she used up all the space and also if you find something like this and it's a dress mother of the bride is a good thing to put in your keywords because those are searched a lot um, or evening this since it's a lighter color may not have been suitable for evening but just some other keywords that you could have used so that is a great sale Angie great thank you for posting that and let's see what else is going on here got all these folks in at the beginning of the the posting on money making Mondays okay here is Tammy Tammy was our gracious hostess in Ohio we had such a great time there thank you so much for having us um, she purchased this for under a dollar and it sold for full asking price of twenty nine dollars <throat> let's see what is it singing teddy bear PBC International sings I want candy Chantilly Lane well and my internet's slow again so um, look at that plush you never know what it's worth this looks like it's got a tag on it that page is not loading so I'm just gonna skip on over that um, but look up that plush because you just don't know what it's gonna sell for it could be something that um, is rare or limited or vintage and people collect this stuff 
Okay, let's see what we've got here. This is a, um, Allie says, I was not a believer in selling boxes until recently. I purchased authentic Hermes scarf boxes at an estate sale for $250 each and sold between $25 and $35 each using seven day auctions. And yes, this is pronounced Hermes, not Hermes. <laughs> So I'm educating you guys on how to pronounce this stuff so you can impress all of your friends um, with the international uh, pronunciation. So this is a scarf box with tissue storage accessories. It's empty and she's got um, all the photos of the inside of it. So who knows, somebody could have bought that and then just put like a Walmart scarf in it and faked their friends out that... I just gave you, gave you a very expensive Hermes scarf for Christmas. <laughs> Who knows why these people buy boxes? Maybe they collect them. Maybe they have a consignment store and they're putting things inside, you know, like an Hermes scarf in there. Um, I've heard lots of reasons why people might buy boxes. So if you know about that, make a comment below. I would love to hear more reasons why. But empty boxes do sell and here's the proof. And again, she purchased these boxes for $2.50 each and sold them between $25 and $35 on seven-day auctions. So there you go. And there's the proof um, that empty boxes sell. Okay, let's see what Allie did another one here. This is a watch. She paid $5 at a garage sale and sold for $50 within a week. Love that these watches has, have survived decades of trends. So let's see what this is, if it will load. There we go. Sometimes Facebook is just slow too. It's such a memory hog that sometimes it's just slow to pull these things up. Okay, Casio, women's baby pink dial rose gold watch and yes these were big in the 80s I remember everybody that had the um, watch with all the different uh, you know things on it um, you know the time with the seconds the date the day of the week you know other stuff and this looks like it was new was it new yeah new without tags and she bought it for five dollars and sold it for fifty dollars so a lot of people still like a watch even though most people have a phone and you can look at the phone to see what time it is um, a lot of people have worn a watch all their life and they just like watches um, it's like books people like books they may not um, accept or adapt to the new technology of reading everything electronically I I don't I don't like to read a whole lot of stuff on my phone um, I'd prefer just to sit down and hold a book and read a book rather than trying to read. I see people at the gym like on the treadmill with their iPad or even on their phone like reading a book while they're on the treadmill and I just I guess I'm not coordinated to do that <laughs> because it just seems like a such a little screen to watch while you're um, trying to walk on the treadmill and I kinda go to the gym to not read my device to like get away from it so anyway that's just me but um, so look for those watches you just never know okay let's see what else okay yeah let me mention this about Rosetta Stone um, that is something that's really not allowed on eBay it's one of those things that can get pulled and obviously M Melissa didn't know and that's fine you know we can't know everything um, but these people here are saying they got a Vero for listing Rosetta Stone and that means it's under the verified um, owner's rights program where it's like intellectual property you can't sell it and so all these people are saying that they their listings have been pulled and it's just because Rosetta Stone has said to eBay we don't want our stuff on there um, it's protected so eBay has to comply with that just like you know Tiffany's they don't want their stuff on eBay they feel it devalues their items so um, just be careful with that if you find a Rosetta Stone I would just try to sell it locally 
because it may get pulled on eBay and um, you're probably not going to get suspended if it's just one thing every now and then because you didn't know but now you know so don't list those on eBay okay here is another sort of vintagey item <laughs> I picked up this old IBM keyboard um, Jerry is saying at Salvation Army for four dollars it did not sell at auction so I relisted it and it sold two weeks later for $64.99 to a California prop company so let's see if we can get that pulled up here we go and this is like the old clickety clackety keyboard <clears throat> excuse me that were on older computers um, I remember these with the the buttons that were like really chunky and stuck up kind of far like they were they weren't real smooth across they were very chunky um, old IBM mechanical keyboard clicky <laughs> yep they're very clicky um, and he paid four dollars and sold it for sixty four ninety nine so and it was to a prop company so it didn't even have to work um, pay attention to movies older mo uh, movies that were taking place in the time when these keyboards were being used and uh, you'll see this okay let's see what else we've got here all right Stephanie let's look at this Calvin Klein shirt dress paid three dollars at a thrift store sold for full asking price of forty nine ninety seven plus shipping in two days and let's see what this is um, oh great the color wheel it's a shirt dress so if you're not familiar with that let's look at what the pictures are on this there we go so you can see that it buttons all the way up the front and it has the little gold belt and it looks like a shirt that's a dress easy enough and those keywords are great it's got the gold buttons very classic style new with the tag and didn't have an original retail price on there she's got all her great information um, perfect and I will say Stephanie is my the manager of my virtual assistant program because she has been with me over a year and we have been figuring this out together <laughs> so um, as we're growing I have promoted her to the manager of the program and she does a fantastic job because here she is she's an active lister uh, active seller she sells stuff every day and she is in that eBay world and knows exactly what to do to get listings sold so so glad to have her on board okay let's see we pick a few more and then we're gonna wrap this up and I will do a part two in a few days okay here's Diana paid five dollars at a thrift store in upstate New York when I was visiting my family I was gonna say Diana I didn't think you lived up in New York okay you were visiting had her VA listed and sold it for full asking price of $59.99 plus shipping after six days and I'm sure a lot of us know this guy the Energizer Bunny um, pink bunny plush flip-flop sunglasses vintage that is really nice in great condition I can see somebody giving that for Christmas or even just a collector that wants to keep it so yep there we go this is what happens when you get your items listed is they sell so if you've got a backlog or you want to be able to list more items every week or month it may be worth looking into hiring some help for that okay let's see. oh here's another one 50 she paid 599 at Goodwill had VA listed and sold for full asking price of 59.99 plus shipping after four days I love it when things sell so fast it just it just helps you keep going I mean this is the key to selling is you've got to keep listing um, 
either tackle your own pile and keep listing every day or as many days as you can or find a way to schedule your listings to go out one every day or something like that because that is the key to getting offers and sales is being active with your listing. Cassini, the eBay search engine, likes active stores. So one activity we can control is listing. We can't control how fast things sell, but we can control getting more items listed. So that's what you need to focus on. Um, when sales are slow, don't come on Facebook groups and say, my sales are slow. Get busy listing. And if you don't have any stuff to list, which is rarely the case, go get some. <laughs> um, sitting on Facebook talking about slow sales is not going to help you. What is going to help you is finding great products, getting them listed, consistent listing, having great return policy, giving good customer service, and of course taking good pictures and a good description. It's, it's really just that easy. There's no magical formula, there's no app or tool or anything like that that's going to help you sell better. It's just doing the work. And if you need help doing the work, I can help you. Um, okay, let's take a look at this one. Wendy I met Wendy when I went to Texas for our workshop, and that was such a pleasure to have you in my class, Wendy. Um, yes, SAS tripod. I also have a pair of these sitting next to my desk I need to list. Um, these are great because they are comfort shoes, and a lot of older people wear them because they have foot problems. They're very, very comfortable, um, basically an orthopedic shoe, and she sold this for $59.99. Oh, let's see community garage sale for 50 cents they sold in about a month and she took a best offer of fifty dollars plus shipping so you know you can't beat that um, one thing I want to show you here is um, speaking of the SAS brand if you haven't heard of that um, I do have a course, a downloadable course, that explains all the great shoes to sell on eBay. And orthotic shoes, comfort shoes, are a very big part of what is popular right now because, um, and of course it's not pulling up, I will put a link to a video about that, sorry about that. Um, as our population is aging, we have this huge segment of the population, the baby boomers, and even now some Gen Xers are, are having foot trouble, where it's all about comfort. It's not necessarily about style. And if you have painful feet, um, it limits you. It limits your activity. You don't want to go anywhere because you have to, you know, be on your feet, or if you have to uh, stand during doing a job or something. Um, these comfort shoes are a lifesaver for people who have foot problems. So they're also very expensive. So if you look these up on Zappos or um, you know as you're out in the world at shoe stores, <laughs> you can see that these are very expensive. Some of them are two to three hundred dollars for a pair of comfort shoes. And if you're a senior citizen on a fixed income or even just you know cost conscious and can't afford that, you're going to go on eBay to look for bargains on these. There is just nothing worse than feet that hurt. And if you can't even afford to buy the shoes at regular price, you're going to be looking for bargains so that you can get these shoes and, you know, function in your daily life. So um, if you're not familiar with SAS, look those up on eBay. But here's a perfect example of a great flip. 50 cents and she sold these for $50. So Wendy, I'm going to end this video <laughs> on that sale and um, would love any of your comments below on any of the items mentioned and I will get to work on part two of this video. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day on eBay. Bye.